character progression in both Salasta and Baldur's Gate closely follow the D&D ruleset. Leveling up grants additional hit points, new skills and powers. At certain levels, players can choose between a feat or increasing their ability scores. Individual class progression also remains true to the D&D core. Fighting classes gain extra attack at level 5, druids unlock wild shape at level 2, wizards have arcane recovery from the get-go, and so on. Although there are some minor variations, but nothing major that is worth noting. And I must admit that I'm not a big fan of this. D&D character progression can feel slow and uneventful at times, with some level ups that basically bring nothing new to your character, except a boost to hit points. New features can be so minor that they are rarely utilized throughout the entire game. In comparison to games like Divinity Original Sin 2, where each level up offers multiple choices and significantly impacts your character, D&D progression appears lacking. It's an aspect that could benefit from improvements to make leveling up more engaging. Interestingly, Baldur's Gate attempts to enhance character progression with something called illicit powers. It introduces a parallel progression system where players can develop their tadpole powers through a separate skill tree. The concept is intriguing, it has a lot to offer and I like the expanded progression. But it comes with a caveat. If you are playing a positive character with a good alignment, the illicit powers probably do not align with your character, as they lean towards the evil side of things. So this whole part of character progression just gets ignored. One significant difference in character progression between two games is multiclassing. In Baldur's Gate you can choose to spend each level up on any other class in the game. This allows for immense variability, enabling characters to be, for example, a level 3 wizard, level 2 bard and level 1 barbarian all at once. With all of the according class features such as proficiencies, subclasses and spells. Though this means that you will not be able to reach the max level with any of the classes. This is a huge D&D system that is sadly absolutely absent in Salasta, Crown of the Magister. D&D 5e typically allows players to reach a maximum level of 20, but both of our games today have a level cap set to 12. What is notable is that during the main campaign of Salasta, I didn't manage to reach level 12, or even 11 for that matter, even after completing essentially all of the content that I could. Missing out on level 11, which is significant for many classes, was disappointing. This comes from the fact that originally the game had the maximum level of 10, but with one of the updates, the level cap has been increased to 12, without rebalancing the game in any way. Having a campaign fall short of the cap level, depriving players of potential content, feels like a big downside in the game design. On the contrary, Baldur's Gate doesn't suffer from this issue, as players often reach level 12 well before finishing the game, allowing them to enjoy the maximum level and explore all of its powers. I don't think that the level cap of 12 is a problem, as it serves as a nice stopping point. Tabletop Dungeons and Dragons campaigns rarely reach level 12 and usually conclude even earlier. High levels in D&D can become quite overpowered. Creating a balanced story and encounters around such formidable heroes can be challenging. Level 20 characters in their power are closer to literal gods than regular people. Though Salasta tries exactly that, by increasing the level cap in one of its DLCs that I will be talking about later. Loot holds a significant role in any RPG, deeply intertwined with character progression. Acquiring new shiny items can transform the gameplay experience. And in Salasta, this system is atrocious. You just don't get new items. And I don't mean that you stumble upon powerful items early on and use them throughout the game, 
I'm referring to the fact that throughout the whole playthrough you might not find better items than the ones that are just available in the shop. Our ranger literally finished the game with a regular plus 2 bow and plus 1 medium armor. But that is a remarkable loot in comparison to the wizard. During the entire 45 hour long campaign I did not stumble upon any other armor aside from the starting one. There wasn't even an alternative purely for cosmetic purposes. I understand that this somewhat mirrors the D&D experience, where loot isn't always abundant. However, the key distinction is that a dungeon master can tailor the loot to their players, offering items that hold specific appeal for the party. In Salasta you might receive a lone new item during the last 5 hours of gameplay and it may not even suit your party's composition. At least there is a crafting system. Most of our weapons were actually products of crafting rather than looting. While this crafting system is a welcomed addition, I can't help but feel that it falls short of replacing the excitement of traditional looting. There's a certain joy in stumbling upon a new treasure in the depths of a dungeon that crafting can't quite replicate. Additionally, it's important to note that not everything can be crafted. For instance, I've encountered no blueprints for closing items throughout the journey. Poor wizard. Apart from weapons and armor, the crafting options extend to include potions, ammunition, poisons and scrolls. Yet I'm inclined to think that this elaborate crafting system might not be entirely necessary. Throughout the gameplay you naturally come across a plethora of potions, poisons and scrolls anyway. Plus I didn't find myself using them all that often, rendering crafting largely unnecessary. If anything, the main thing this system introduced is a flood of crafting related junk items, which I kept hoarding just in case. Baldur's Gate handles looting with a much more adept touch offering a greatly more satisfying system. It still doesn't flood you with rare items. Comparatively speaking, I'd say the frequency of item drops is lower than in other expansive RPGs like Divinity Original Sin 2. But there's enough. You're consistently stumbling upon intriguing gear that can benefit your party. Often tucked away in secret corners, guarded by formidable foes, or bestowed as rewards for not worthy deeds. One particularly appealing aspect is the way the game enables you to take unique gear from NPCs. If you spot someone wearing a distinct piece of armor or wielding a remarkable weapon, there's a good chance that you can obtain it for yourself. Defeated characters reliably drop their possessions, a fact that is established early on. During the tutorial, if you disregard the objective to flee and instead eliminate a specific enemy, you're rewarded with one of the game's finest early game weapons. What enhances the experience even further is that, as previously mentioned, the weapons in BG boast additional skills that you can use if you are proficient with said weapon. This aspect imbues looting with an additional layer of significance, as acquiring new weapons not only boosts your stats and amplifies your damage, but also influences your combat style by introducing new skills. While occasional weapon and armor crafting opportunities do arise in Baldur's Gate, they are rather designed as side quests than actual crafting systems. The only major crafting system in BG is Alchemy. You have the capacity to craft a wide variety of potions, grenades and poisons. Nevertheless, similar to Salasta, the game showers you with a substantial amount of these items organically, somewhat diminishing the demand for crafting. Though some of the craftables can be really powerful. Especially as, remind you, using potions and poisons is a bonus action in this game, which makes them much easier to utilize. And overall making alchemy a nice additional system to be available in the game. In conclusion, while both Salasta and Baldur's Gate stick closely to the D&D ruleset in terms of general character progression, the BG system has clear advantages, 
thanks to the multi-classing possibilities and additional illicit powers, while loot and crafting systems vary significantly. Salasta's looting is underwhelming, and although crafting somewhat compensates, it doesn't replicate the thrill of traditional looting. Baldur's Gate's loot system offers much more satisfying rewards and allows players to obtain unique gear from NPCs, with crafting playing a less central role.